Greetings, and welcome to Readings from the Poetic Adal with Gwenop Mananen. Get the comfy chair, grab a cup of tea, and warm yourself by the fire, and get ready to listen to some lovely ancient wisdom from the North. Give Ruth and taught him wisdom. In the spring, the peasant gave him a boat, and when the couple led them to the shore, the peasant spoke secretly with Geruth. They had a fair wind and came to their father's landing place. Geruth was forward in the boat. He leaped up on land, but pushed out the boat and said, Go thou now where evil may have thee. The boat drifted up to sea. Geruth, however, went up to their house and was well received, but his father was dead. Then Geruth was made king and became a renowned man. Odin and Frigg sat in Hlithskjof and looked over all the worlds. Odin said, Seest thou Agnar, the fosterling, how he begets children with the giantess in the cave? But Geruth, my fosterling, is a king and now rules over his land. Frigg said, He is so miserly that he tortures his guests if he thinks that too many of them come to him. Odin replied that this was the greatest of lies, and they made a wager about this matter. Frigg sent a maid servant Fula to Geruth. She bade the king beware lest a magician who was come thither to his land should bewitch him and told this sign concerning him. Now it was a very great slander that King Geruth was not hospitable, but nevertheless he had them take the man whom the dogs would not attack. He wore a dark blue mantle and called himself Grimnir, but he said no more about himself, though he was questioned. The king had him tortured to make him speak, and he set him between two fires. And there he sat eight nights, King Geruth had a son, ten winters old, and called Agnar after his father's brother. Agnar went to Grimnir and gave him a full horn to drink from, and said that the king did ill in letting him be tormented without cause. Grimmer drank from the horn, the fire had come so near that the mantle burned on Grimnir's back. He spake. Hot art thou fire, too fierce by far, get ye now gone ye flames. The mantle is burnt, though I bear it aloft, and the fire scorches the fur. Twixt the fires now, eight nights have I sat, and no man brought me to me. Save Agnar alone, and alone shall rule Geruth's son o'er the Goths. Hail to thee, Agnar, for hail thou art by the voice of Veratir, for a single drink thou never shall receive, a greater gift as reward. The land is holy that lies had by the gods and elves together. 
and thou shall ever in truth time dwell till the gods to destruction go. Either lair call they the place where all a hall for himself hath sat. And Alfheim the gods to Freya once as a tooth gift in ancient times. A third home is there with silver thatched by the hands of the gracious gods. Valus Goffet is in days of old set by a god for himself. Sukvabek is forth well cool ways flow and amid them murmur it stands the daily do odin and saga drink in gladness from cups of gold the fifth is glassheim and gold bright there stands val hal stretching wide and there does odin each day choose the men who were fallen in fight. Easy it is to know for him who to Odin comes and beholds in the hall its rafters of spears with shields is it roofed on its benches are ah, breastplates strewn. Easy is it to know for him to Odin comes and beholds the hall. There hangs a wolf by the western door, and oh, an eagle hovers. The six is Thrymheim, where Thorzi dwelt, the giant of marvelous might. Now Skadi abides the gods' fair bride in the home that her father had. The seventh is Breitablik. Balder has there for himself a dwelling set. In the land I know that lies so fair and from evil fate is free. Him in Bjorg is the eighth and hamed all there o'er men hold sway it is said in his well-built house does the warder of heaven the good mead gladly drink the ninth is folkvang where freya decrees who shall have seats in the hall the half of the dead each day does she choose and half does Odin have? The tenth is Glitnir, its pillars are gold, and its roof with silver is set. The most of his days does fall Seti dwell, and sets all strife at end. The eleventh is Nauten, there has Njorth for himself a dwelling set. The sinless ruler of men there sits in his temple, timbered high. Filled with growing trees and high standing grass is Vithi, Vitha's land. But there did the son from his steed leap down when his father he fain would avenge. In El Trimnir and Trimnir cooks, Sin Trimner seething flesh, the best of food, but few men know on what fair the warriors feast. Freki and Geri does here for the feed, the far famed fighter of old. But on wine alone does the weapon decked god Odin forever live. O oh, Midgard, Hugin, and Munin, both, each day set forth to fly. For Hugin, I fear lest he not come home, but for Munin, my care is more. 
Loud roars tuned and tucked with near as fish, joyously fares in the flood. Had does it seem to the host of the slain to wave the torrent wild. The vowel grind stands the sacred gate, and behind are holy doors. Old is the gate, but few there are who can tell how tightly it's locked. Five hundred doors and forty there are, I ween in Valhall's walls. Eight hundred fighters go through one door, fair when to war with the wolf they go. Five hundred rooms and forty there are, I ween in Bilskirnir built. Of all the homes whose roofs I beheld, my sons the greatest me seemed. Hathron is the goat who stands by here father's hall, and the branches of Lareth she bites. The pitcher she fills with the fair clear mead, Ne'er fails the foaming drink. Eichthrenir is the hat who stands by here father's hall, and the branches of Lareth he bites. From his horn stream into Vergelmere drops, thence all the rivers run. Sith and Vith, Saken, and Aiken, Svor, and Fimblethor, Gunthro, and Fjorn, Rin, and Rinnandi, Gipo, and Gopo, Gomo, and Gevimor that flow through the fields of the gods, Thin, and Vin, Thor, and Hall, Groth, and Guthornin. Vino is one, Vegsvin is another, and Dottunama is the third. Nyit and Not, Non and Thron, Slith and Thrith, Silg and Ilg, Vith and Von, Vond and Strond, Gjol and Leapt, go among men, and hence they fall to hell. Caught and Ormt and the Kellogg's twain shall thaw every day wade through. When dooms to give, he shall forth go to the ash tree, Yggdrasil. For heaven's bridge burns all in flame, and the sacred waters seethe. Clath and Gilla, Clare and Skithbrimir, Silfrin top. And Sinna. Gissel and Valhof near Galtop and Letverty on these deeds shall the gods go. When dooms to give each day they ride to the ash tree, Yggdrasil. Three routes there are that three ways run neath the ash tree, Yggdrasil. Neath the first lives hell, neath the second. The frost giants neath the last are the lands of men. Ratatask is the squirrel, who there shall run on the ash tree Yggdrasil. From above the words of the eagle he bears, and tells them the Nidhogg below. For hearts there are that the highest of twigs nibble with their necks bent back. Dane and Volin, Dunia and Draithral, more serpents there are beneath the ash than an unwise ape would think. Goin and Moin, Gratvitnir's sons, Grabak and Grafoluf. Ofnir and Svafnir shall ever, methinks, gnaw at the twigs of 
Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil's ash, great evil suffers far more than men do know. The heart bites its top, the trunk is rotting, and Nitog gnaws beneath. Hrist and mist bring the horn at my will, and Skegjold and Skogul, Hild and Truth, Plok and Hirvultur, Gol and Girunul. Rangrith and Rathgrith and Regin Leaf. Beer to the warriors bring. Arvak and Ulsvith shall drag up weary the weight of the sun. But an iron cool have the kindly gods of your set under their yokes. In front of the shining sunders fallen stand the shield for the shining god. Mountains and sea would be set in flames if it fell from before the sun. Skull is the wolf that the iron wood follows to the glittering god. And the sun of Throtvitnir Hati waits the burning bride of heaven out of Ymir's flesh was fashioned the earth and the ocean out of his blood of his bones the hills of his hair the trees of his skull the heavens high midgard the gods from his eyebrows made and set for the sons of men and out of his brain the baleful clouds they made to move on high. His the favour of all and of all the gods who first in the flames will reach, for the house can be seen by the sons of the gods if the kettle aside were cast. In the days of old did Evoldi's son, Skitla near fashion fair. The best of ships for the bright god Freyr, the noble son of the Njorth. The best of the trees must Yggdrasil be, skid blood near the best of the boats. Of all the gods is Odin the greatest, and Sleipnir the best of steeds. Bifrost of bridges. Braggy of scolds, Hobrook of hawks, and Gam of hounds. To the race of gods my face have I raised, and the wished-for aid I have waked. For to all the gods has the message gone, that sit in the Aesir's seats, that drink within the Aesir's doors. Grim is my name, Gangaleriam one, Herian and Hjalberi, Thek, and Thrithi, Tooth, and Uth, Helbindi and Hor, Sak, and Svipple, and Sengetol, Hertit, and Nikar, Belig, Belig, Vorsk, Fjolnir, Grim, and Grimnir, Glapsvith, Fjolsith, Sitok. Sitzkeg, Sig, Father, Nikuth, All Father, Val, Father, Atrith, Farmatir, a single name I never have had since first among men I have fed. Grimnir, they call me in Giru's hall with Osman Jokamai. Kyala, I was when I went in the sledge at the council, Thoror, I am called, as Vitter I fare to the fight, Oski bin Flidi Jatho, and Omi Gonlir and Harbarth, midst gods. So I deceived the giant, Sok Mimir old, as Svitha and 
Sutrir of all. Of Mitvinir's son, the sire I was, when the famed one found his doom. Drunk art thou, Geruth, too much didst thou drink, much hast thou lost for help no more, from me or my heroes thou hast. Small heed didst thou take to all that I told, and false were the words of thy friends. For now the sword of my friend I see, that waits all wet with blood. Thy sword-pierced body shall Ig have soon, for thy life has ended at last. The maids are hostile, now Odin, behold, now come to me if thou canst. Now am I Odin. Ig was I once, ere that did they call me Dund. Vak and Skiffing, Vofus and Fropta, Tyr, Gout and Jalk midst the gods. Ofnir and Svafnir and all, methinks, are names but none for me. Hingeruth sat and had his sword on his knee, half drawn from its sheath. But when he heard that Odin was come thither, then he rose up and sought to take Odin from the fire. The sword slipped from his hand and fell with the hilt down. The king stumbled and fell forward, and the sword pierced him through and slew him then. Odin vanished, but Agna long ruled there as king. Well, today we've managed to do the entire Grimness Small portion of the Poetic Adar. It was great, wasn't it? Good old Odin got to come out and show everybody what a sneaky wizard he is and right the wrongs going on. So. Stay tuned for this next edition, which will uh, be the Skirmnismal portion of the Poetic Adar. It's a lovely ballad and involves Freya and Freya. So we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know how I'm doing and come and join me on Facebook. I'll add you as my friend and put you on my fans list and keep you up to date with what's going on here and at and fun things. I hope that you all have a beautiful day and that you enjoy today's readings. Take care. Cheers.